Hello everybody, good evening. It's 7.30 here in London and welcome to everybody part of this community. I've got a lovely guest on today um, and her name is Debbie Solaris all the way from, where are you Debbie actually? <laughs> I'm in, I'm just south of Denver, Colorado in the United States. So um, right, in the, right smack dab in the middle of the country. So um, in uh, the Rocky Mountains, yep. Oh, how beautiful. Well. Yeah. Well, lovely. It's such a, going to be out of the world talk today because Debbie is um, an ET contactee, extraterrestrial contactee. She's an interdimensional traveler and a galactic historian. Um, and after she had an experience with inter extraterrestrial beings, she suddenly woke up. I'm going to get her to talk uh, exactly about what happened to her. But I can definitely say that I've had a reading with Debbie. It was one of the most amazing readings I've ever had. It was literally out of this world. <laughs> and okay. Debbie, welcome today. And how are you doing? Um, thank you for having me on. I'm excited to, you know, reach uh, the folks across the other side of the pond. <laughs> so thanks for having me. And uh, um, I'm actually doing really well. Um, it's been, a, it's, I've been busy lately, but it's been a good busy. So, um, so I'm really excited. Uh, really excited to, you know, share, you know, this information with your listeners as well. Um, yeah, thank you. And so, because you're booked up until July, aren't you now, which is amazing. Um, yeah, and that's only because I closed my calendar. I think I would have been booked out till the end of the year if I left it open. But um, my husband and I do want to take vacation every now and then. So uh, <laughs> yeah, that helps. Yeah, it helps. Yeah. You know, so uh um, but yes, uh, yeah, I do get, um, I tend to get booked out really fast. Um, you know, when, once I do open up the calendar, it's like within a couple of hours, usually it's like, you know, I get booked out for like two months. Um, uh, as if people are interested in having readings with me, um, I would suggest that they go on my website and go to the booking page and, uh, they can sign up to be notified when the calendar opens up again. And, yeah. Um, I think we're going to open it up in June. So I think we'll do, um, it, it'll either be let, late, late May or early June. We'll open up the calendar again and we'll get some more, more bookings. Um, but thank you for mentioning that. Uh, yeah, we did have an amazing reading. You, you, um, you had a very fascinating, uh, galactic journey to say the least. So, um, yeah. So just to let everybody know, why are your readings so different from any other reading? And also, what is it that you actually do? I mean, I find it, I found it so fascinating. You blew my mind with my reading. You, you literally did. You literally oh, did. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah. And um, I think it was, it, the truth of what you say kind of resonates inside us, you know? Right. So, right. so, so tell us what your tell us what you actually do and okay, how, yeah. you know, how did you get into this? Um, well, that's, that's, uh, that's going to be a kind of a long question, but um, I'll do the first part first, and then we go into how I got into this um, in, the, in the second part. But uh, um, I think my readings are different because I, when I do an Akashic reading, I do it from the galactic perspective. So I go beyond planet Earth. Um, and I'm usually I'm going to the very beginning of a soul's inception. So I don't just stop off at, oh, where were you at, you know, before you came to Earth? I'm looking at you know, the journey that you started probably millions of years ago. Um, and through, and, and it's, so it's kind of like a 180 degree view of your, your soul's journey. So you're going from the inception to each star system that you've incarnated into to until you finally get to earth. And then we also look at some of your earth lives as well. But, um, but the reason why I think my readings are different is because I, I, I think I take galactic um, concepts and galactic star races and, uh, and with a kind of a psychological perspective of it, um, help the client to maybe resolve some of their own questions about themselves or struggles that they're having in their life and and so they're seeing this pattern, you know, they're seeing like, oh, yes, I've gone through this before, or this is a, a personality tendency that I have. So there's, I think, um, a lot of value to, um, to having this type of reading. And uh, 
a lot of times my clients will tell me that the reading was life changing for them. That it, it was you know, for me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was completely like, you know, wow, you know, um, I never realized that about myself or I've forgotten about that about myself, but it all resonates It all, you know, starting to put those puzzle pieces together. And so it helps us to achieve our highest potential at that point, because now we know what we're truly capable of. Yeah. And why you're on planet earth as well. Exactly. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, yeah. A lot of people, I think when um, a lot of us that are star seeds or angelics, or we come from the higher dimensional realms that, have volunteered to be here on earth uh, because we've gone, we, you know, we go from these higher dimensional realms to third dimensional earth. We go through this veil of forgetfulness. And so we forget everything when we incarnate here. And it takes us sometimes several decades before we start remembering, or we start having this feeling of, you know, I think there's something more to the reason why I'm here than just to work, pay bills, pay taxes, you know, take care of my family, you know, um, all the mundane things that we normally do, you know, in our 3D lives, but we start realizing that, you know, I think, I think I have a bigger purpose here and I want to find out what that is. Yeah. Yeah. So how did this all start for you? Um, it, yeah, it's kind of amazing. I was actually one of those people that lived a very ordinary life before, you know, I was unawakened, you know, I worked for, I was, I was actually, uh, I'm actually a military veteran. I, I was in the Na U.S. Navy for a few years. And then um, when I got out of the Navy, I started working for environmental health, you know, so, you know, worked, uh, I worked for the IT um, industry for a few years as well. So I've always worked kind of technical jobs and uh, um, I did that for many years and my family just wasn't the type of family that talked about paranormal activity or spirituality or um, metaphysics, you know, this wasn't something that was ever discussed. Um, uh, so I kind of got introduced to it through my partner who is my, my husband, who is, um, he's a UF, he's a paranormal um an enthusiast, you know, UF, ufology enthusiast, you, you know, he's been following this stuff for years. And I thought it was really strange when I first started dating him. Like, what is he, why is he reading UFO magazine? You know, <laughs> I mean, like, yeah. you know, what's this about? Um, and uh, so, you know, so because he was reading the magazines, I started reading them too. And it started expanding my mind a little bit. Like, you know, hmm, you know, maybe some of this stuff might be, there might be some validity to it, but I was still skeptical. I know I wasn't like on totally on board. Uh, um, kind of the fast forward from there. Uh, I think my awakening really started um, in 2012. Um, so in 2012, uh, I was going through personally some major transitions in my own life and uh the planet was definitely going through major transitions. Uh, so between, you know, personal life and planetary transitions, I was a bit worried about things. I, you know, I, I didn't know what was going to happen. You know, I, I just thought, you know, well, it looks like the earth is going to hell in a handbasket. You know, I don't know. I mean, it's a yeah. lot of things are going wrong. Um, uh, so one night I, this was in May, 2012, I sent out a prayer to the universe. I thought, you know, I got to ask for a divine intervention because things are kind of crazy and things are still crazy. You know, even today, it seems like we kind of go through these cycles where things calm down for a while and then things get crazy again. And then things calm down for a while and then they get crazy again. But um, so we're going through another cycle of this craziness, but um, mm -hmm. Uh, but I did, I did send out a prayer to the, it was like a sleepless night. I, I couldn't sleep. And so I sent out this really earnest prayer to the universe that, um, I was asking for assistance for planet earth. So I was asking for assistance for, you know, uh, the, the people on earth who were suffering, the animals who were suffering, the environment. I just felt like there was a lot of things that could be going a lot better on earth. And, uh, yeah. Um, and I was just asking everybody, I was asking the angelic realm, the ascended masters, uh, 
um, Jesus, Mother Mary, um, even even the Galactic Brothers and Sisters. Uh, and I didn't even know if they existed. I was just like, well, I'll just add them in there, you know. So <laughs> yeah, you know, so I was like, you know, okay, I'll add in the Galactic Brothers and Sisters. And uh, and uh, about two weeks after the prayer, so so two weeks had passed by, nothing had happened. You know, I was like, you know, I woke up the next day you know, same old stuff, you know, went to work, you know, forgot about the prayer. Mm -hmm. And about two weeks afterwards, um, I had a minor back surgery where it was just a laser surgery and I was recovering at home and a a few days had passed after the surgery and I went to sleep as normal. And when I came back into consciousness, I was in a different reality. I was not in my bedroom. I wasn't on planet earth. I didn't know where I was, but when I kept looking around, I was like, wow, the colors seem really brilliant. And all the details seem real. It seemed like a hyper reality. The details are really sharp. It was a hyper reality. It was just like, I've never seen anything like this. And as I looked around, I realized I was in an extraterrestrial starship. I was like, this is, this is a starship. Um, And it, but it didn't look um, Mc, Mc, uh, didn't look metallic, which was because um, usually on sci-fi movies, you know, you watch like Star Trek or Star Wars, the ships mm-hmm. always look really metallic. Yeah, um, everything's very really shiny. Yeah, 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 everything's shiny. Yeah, this wasn't like that. It it looked like a starship, but it was very organic. It was um, seemed like it was made of light and plasma like materials. It was like a, um, a technology I'd never seen. Um, mm-hmm. And the ship, the ship was like a sentient being and it kind of sensed what I was doing and it was kind of guiding me towards the space and which I thought was really amazing. But um, so it was kind of guiding me towards the space. And so I kind of followed along and then I found myself in this uh, kind of what they call the orientation room. It was like a, kind of a big conference room or something. And uh, there were four or five extraterrestrial beings in this, uh, in this room. And they were beings, I've never seen beings like that before. Um, they didn't look like great aliens. Like a lot of times when you read about extraterrestrial abductions, it's usually greys or Nordics or reptilians. And yeah. they didn't look like any of those types of beings. Uh, they were strange looking, but they were beautiful. I mean, they looked somewhat humanoid. They, they, they had larger heads, the larger eyes, um, large, they did have pupils and irises in their eyes. So that's what I knew that at that point they weren't grace. Okay. Um, yeah. Their skin was more of a, maybe a bluish greenish color um, when I could see them. Their auras were so bright. I had a hard time looking at them directly. So I had to look at them with my periphery, you know, then I could see them. Um, And they had such large auras and the auras had colors I've never seen. It's like colors outside of the earth color spectrum um, that we only see on earth. Uh, And, uh, Yeah, they were small. I mean, they weren't very tall. They were maybe my height, maybe um, a little shorter. Um, I'm only five foot, so um, I'm not very tall either. But uh, um, they had, uh, yeah. You weren't, sorry to interrupt you, Debbie, but you weren't scared at this point? Were you just kind of going going along with it? Okay. No, I was just going along with it. I was just just trying to figure out who these beings were. I was just like, you know. (laughs) okay, this is interesting. You know, what's, what's going on? You know, no, I wasn't scared at all. I was just like, you know, what's all this, you know? Uh, so I was thinking of questions to ask them. And even before I, I was able to open my mouth to formulate the question, they were answering my questions because they were here. There was, they were telepathically communicating with me with my yeah. thoughts. And I was amazed because I was like, Oh, I didn't know they understand English, you know, but that is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, um, and so, you know, so I was just asking them, okay, okay, where am I? Uh, Who are you? And why am I here? Um, And they told me that I was on board an Arcturian starship, that they're Arcturians from Arcturus, 
they even showed me on a hologram so that there was a hologram within this room holographic kind of sphere they were, they were showing you know kind of illustrating what they were talking about so they showed me on a star map where Arcturus was located and I was like oh wow okay and uh, and they told me I was there because um, they heard my prayer and they were very impressed with my prayer and uh, they, they told me that I was part of their family and I was like and that really confused me. I was like, what? What are you talking about? I'm part of your family. Um, do you mean spiritually? And they said, oh, no, no, physically, too. And I was like, really? Um, and it, it, I had a lot of questions. So it took I was there for a while. So I was asking them one question after another after another. And they were patiently answering all my questions. They were using the hologram to kind of illustrate some of their concepts. But mo all of our communication was through telepathy. And, mm. uh, which, which amazed me, I, you know, I was like, wow, I didn't know I could speak in telepathy, you know, mm. but, uh, um, and a lot of what they were, were explaining was what was happening on earth, uh, why things were the way they are. And they used the word illusion. So they said that everything in the third dimension is an illusion and that the real reality is really in the higher dimensional realms. And I was like, okay, well, that confuses me because things seem really real, you know, when you're in the third dimension. Yeah, and, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, um, but I, I think I understand it more now, you know, now that I've been on the spiritual path for a while, but at the time I was really confused. You know, I was just like, what are they talking about illusion? Um, um, and then I kept asking them, you know, what's what's in plans for planet Earth? Uh, and they told me that it was our choice. But and then they showed me this reality, you know, it was kind of like the simulation of what future Earth could end up being. And yeah, was it, it a was, good place or was it coronavirus? What, what did they show you? No, it was actually really good. I was crying. I was, it was so good. I was crying. I, I started oh, crying because it was so beautiful. Uh, um, no, it, um, but I think it was like they were saying this was a possibility for Earth. So they weren't saying that Earth was definitely going to achieve this. But yeah, yeah. Um, but they showed, uh, you know, homes that were integrated into the environment where you couldn't even tell they were a house. I mean, it was like, um, and there was small, smaller communities. Uh, there was no cars, there was no roads or cars. Um, most people were able to teleport themselves to where they wanted to go. Um, so there was very advanced technologies. Uh, most homes were powered by free energy devices. Um, all homes had uh, like a octagonal looking greenhouse where you could grow your own food and share it with your neighbors. Um, it was just amazing. I mean, it was... Uh, it is amazing. I, we don't have that right now. Maybe that's something we're going towards at some point, you know? That's what the Arcturians were saying, that this was a possibility for planet Earth, because I kept asking them, is this just for rich people? Because that's my conditioning, where I think rich people have... That was my conditioning back <laughs> then. That rich people have everything that's good. And they said, oh, no, they said, this is for everybody. And they were laughing at me, because they, they knew where I was coming from, you know? The, yeah. They were... Uh, the Arcturians had a great sense of humor, you know, they were every now and then they would crack a joke or they would, you know, poke fun at me a little bit, but it was all in good, you know, in good fun. And, um, and they were just laughing at me because I was like, you know, is this just for rich people? And I was like, no, this is for everybody. Everybody gets to have this. <laughs> like, really? Um, and, uh, I, I was crying. I was like, oh, I hope this happens. I hope this happens. Um, we need this on earth. You know, we need, um, and it was beautiful. I mean, everything was green. There was animals coming around, you know, it was just like maybe a Disney movie or something. I mean, was, that sounds way too good to be true. Sounds amazing to be honest. Yeah, no, it you sounds know? Like, yeah, it sounds exactly. You know, and the homes were beautiful. I mean, I was just like, I mean, and they were so modern and, you know, it's like the technology was beyond, you know, anything that we can imagine today, you know, where the, where the home kind of responds to you, you know, where you, you just think of something and the home responds. And, a plate of food and there it is in front of you. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> you want to turn on the lights and the lights turn on, you know, so. Yeah. Um, 
So yeah, there were some interesting aspects of being on board the ship. Uh, I was on, sh on the ship for a while. It felt like I was there for a long time, uh, more longer than the eight hours I was asleep. But, um, right. Um, and everybody always asked me, well, well, were you yourself on your, on the ship? And I said, yeah, I think I looked like myself, you know, I was probably there in my pajamas. I don't know. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, cause when I looked at my hands, my hands looked like my own hands, you know, I, you know, obviously there weren't mirrors around, you know, but mm. it seemed like I was myself, but I do think it was more of a out of body experience where my consciousness was there but maybe my body my actual body was still in in the bed but yeah uh, uh they so did happen sorry go on go on oh, i was just gonna say uh they did show me around the ship uh I, they took me to one room where they called it the sleeping room and i was kind of uh, uh and i'll wrap this up here in a moment but because i know we have a lot of other questions but <laughs> all um, right people may have questions as well but i can see some people watching at the moment so go on it's all right go ahead yeah so um they took me to a room where the room just shifted and changed it, you know it, it shifted to showing the room turned purple and it was showing me different uh landscapes uh, i think it was asian landscapes and, and i kept asking the arcturians why is it doing this and they said it's because this is what you find relaxing and i was like okay you know i didn't know that but, <laughs> but then they kind of let me loose and i was wandering around the ship and there was a hun hundreds of other extraterrestrial beings so it wasn't just arcturians oh. there was representatives from many different star races that was on board the ship wow. and Okay. I've had interactions with other star races. Um, I went to this, uh, I think I managed to get myself into a big atrium. So this was like the center point of the ship. And it was like several, several stories high. There were several levels and there was hundreds of extraterrestrial beings walking around. And oh, uh, crazy. yeah, and I was it sounds like something out of a film. It really does. Oh, really? no, it was a it was the most amazing experience I've ever had in my life. That's why I still remember it like it happened yesterday, because even though this happened in 2012 um, and I, ha I did have interactions with a Pleiadian being, um, he was helping me figure out how to use the there was like light shafts that would take these beings from one end of the room to another, which was kind of amazing. They looked like rainbows, but it was like they would step on it and it would just transport them to the other side of the atrium and wow. i was trying to get on these light shafts and it wouldn't let me it would just keep throwing me off and so there was a pleiadian uh, man nearby who telepathically told me you need to think about where you want to go first then step on the light shaft and it'll take you there if it if you don't think of if you don't set your intention first it's not going to know where you want to go, you know? And I'm like, mm -hmm. okay. And it's going to throw you off. So I, so I was like, okay, I guess, you know, I'll, I'll do what you said, tell me to do. Cause you know what you're doing. I don't know what I'm doing. So, <laughs> so I just thought about, okay, I want to go there. And then I stepped on the light shaft and I was actually being transported across the space. But then I woke up in the middle of it and I was back in my 3d room, my 3d bed. And I was bummed out you know so oh, were you actually in the hospital then or back at your home i was in my home i was in my oh, home back in yeah. your home but how did, yeah, it was how a few did it... days after the surgery yeah it was oh, um, crazy so how does it feel like you had that wonderful experience and then suddenly you're back into the real the real world real world how, um, how did that feel for you i mean you, it must have been a bit of a shock or a downer for sure it was right? a downer yeah i initially i felt really like energized i was excited you know i I told my husband what, what what happened and he didn't believe me at first, but now he believes me. But, um, uh, but afterwards, um, it, it's like you go on this immense high and then you get this really, you know, it's like you get this big crash. Um, yeah. yeah. I was depressed for months afterwards. I was like, why am I back here? And, and even the reality after you've seen the, like the fifth or the higher dimensions, um, when you come back to third dimension, everything looks fuzzy, looks really dull um, compared to what you see when you're in the higher dimensions. 
And I was yeah. having to go to work. I was still working my 3D job at the time. And it was really depressing. Yeah. So I was I was depressed for months. Yeah. Yeah. So tell us, how did you get out of that? And also, you then started to be able to do these readings, right? I understand yeah. that, that suddenly that triggered something and you were able to read people with this amazing oh, yeah. accuracy. What, what happened with that? that? Tell us about that. Oh, OK. Um, eventually, I, I did start taking a lot of spiritual classes because I was just trying to figure out what the heck happened to me. You know, I was just yeah, trying yeah. to. You know, <laughs> um, so I, I took a bunch of spiritual classes between 2012 and 2015. OK. Um, and I um, I noticed that after I had that experience, uh, it was like my extrasensory perception increased a hundredfold. It was like I was seeing auras, I was hearing people's thoughts, I was interdimensionally traveling into different dimensions, I was seeing UFOs all the time, I was, oh. I was able to telepathically communicate with the UFOs I was seeing. It was insane. And I was just like, what in the heck is happening to me? This is crazy. And so I was trying to find answers, you know, like, like anybody else would when they have, you know, a very life changing experience like that. I was just trying to find answers. And, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and then I was noticing that when I would have interactions with people, I was picking up information on them spontaneously, like, I mean, just oddball information, like, you know, oh, well, they're Pleiadian, they've had lives in the Pleiades, or or um, the reason why her husband likes griffins is because he comes from a Irish family and they have a griffin on their crest. I, I mean, it's just weird stuff. And, or, or they had a lot of Celtic lives. I mean, it was just like crazy stuff. And, mm -hmm. and so I was asking one of my spiritual teachers, where is this information coming from? And I'm getting, and then I was at the same time, I was getting downloads of information about galactic wars and uh, different star races and astronomical information about different star systems. And I didn't even know, I, I've never studied astronomy in my life. And all of a sudden I knew all about these star systems. And I was seeing all this history of the, of the you know, of galactic history. And and so I was asking my spiritual, one of my spiritual teachers, where is this coming from? And she says, sounds like you're accessing information from the Akashic records. And yeah, I said, I don't even know how I'm, how I'm doing it. You know, I don't even know how this happens. And so she encouraged me to take her Akashic reading courses. And I said, and she was local. So I said, yeah, sure. You know, sounds like, sounds great. And I'm glad I took the courses. So even though I had the natural ability to access the records, the courses gave me kind of a process mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. vocabulary. And uh, so for those of the, those people who don't know, Debbie, sorry to interject you there, but oh no, what you're is, fine. Yeah. What What are Akashic readings? I know what they are, but some people may not know. So do you just want to explain what that is? A bit? Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I didn't know this either. I, I had no idea what the Akashic records were until 2014, but um uh, Akashic records are the energetic um, records of the entire universe. So, wow. so this exists in the higher dimensional planes. It's like it's it's like a com uh, like an energetic computer program. Okay, mm -hmm. where um, you can you can connect your consciousness with the Akashic records, and you can download information on anything you want. Every single being, every sentient being even animals and plants have Akashic records. Okay. Um, so not just humans, every being, whether they're humanoid or not humanoid, or if they're animals or whatever, everything has an Akashic record. Um, so when you're doing an Akashic records reading, um, you're, you're specifically accessing the records either for yourself or for your clients, you know, so a lot of times with, you know, the Akashic record process, we just ask for the client full name and birth date and bam, we're able to, you know, get their records. Okay. Um, and, uh, and if you, if you practice enough with it, you can get a lot of information and you can go beyond planet earth. Um, and I'm probably one of the few Akashic readers that um, there might be others besides me, but I actually go beyond the earth records. I go, <laughs> Yeah, you know, you do. <laughs> you yeah, do. Yeah, go way beyond. Yeah. So, um, 
And a lot of us are, you know, we're all so shards of source. We've all had a multitude of different experiences, um, you know, even before earth. Uh, I do get some souls that have only had earth lives. I mean, it's all they ever had because they're part of an earth soul group. Um, however, I would say the majority of us that are on the spiritual path or um, are here to be light workers um, have probably come from somewhere else. There's probably mm -hmm. more star seeds here than there ha ever has been in the history of planet Earth. Um, so, what is a star seed? That term we hear that everywhere. Oh and yeah, I, absolutely. I, so let. So, do you want to explain what a star seed? Oh is? yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Because I, I know I you know I know I'm from Sirius, the star Sirius. That's what yeah, you yeah. told me, and I've heard yeah. that before. And when yeah. you said it, I was like, yeah, I know I'm from there. I just know. But yeah. well, what is a star seed and how can people find out what they oh, are? Oh, yeah, that's a great question. Uh, well, star seed is a soul that has a human experience on Earth or a human incarnation on Earth, but their soul actually originated from another star system. So, so they didn't have all their past lives on Earth. You know, they might have had... They might have had uh, incarnations in Sirius or Pleiades or Arcturus or some of the other star systems, even before they came to Earth. And, uh, and not all star seeds are awakened yet. You know, I think sometimes the majority of us have eventually awakened. You know, we, we, we have this feeling usually in childhood that I don't feel like I belong here. I don't think I'm from here. I don't feel like I fit in with my earth family. So we have these feelings. I, I know I'm here for a purpose. I don't know what it is yet. But then as I think we go, we start our spiritual paths in our spiritual journeys, we start discovering more and more about ourselves. Um, as far as how to find out where you're from, other than having a reading with me, I also do star seed origins readings for those that don't want like the full Akashic reading, but just want to know where they're from. But um you know, you can ask your higher guidance. Um, you know, if you have a connection with your higher guides, you can ask where you're, where you're from. Uh, usually if you read something about a star system, you feel like, gosh, I really resonate with that star system a lot. I really resonate with that. More yeah. than likely, you're probably from that star system. And I, I hear people tell me that about, you know, Atlantis and Lemuria too. Like they feel like, oh, I have this pool towards Atlantis or I have this pool towards Lemuria. Mm -hmm. And or I feel really connected to Pleiadians, you know. So, um, so there's various ways that you can find out, you know, outside of having a reading with me. I'll, I'll figure it out for you right away, usually, because I, I read the auric field and um, yeah. look at the, um, I just offered a webinar on that, as a matter of fact, how to read the auric field of people and figure out where the star systems are from, but or what star systems are from. But well, you can tell us that one uh, later on when we're, when we're about to leave. Just to yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll go into that later. Yeah, I'm sure um, people would be happy to do that. Um, so Dorothy's just saying, I came in contact with the Akashic Records first time last year in a treatment that I had, um, and it was mind blowing, she says. So it is because. People, you hear about these terms and they all sound very new agey and all the rest of it. Yeah. But, but and some people within the confines of their faith, like if they're Christian or if they're Muslim, mm -hmm. they don't necessarily believe that we have, we come from, it, it seems too far fetched to them to believe that we may come from other planets or other, or we're multi dimensional beings. But mm -hmm. um, from the reading I had with you, Debbie, it was really clear that I was. And I, mm -hmm. you know, even though I had, huge big traumas in ancient egypt it went mm -hmm. way beyond ancient oh egypt. yeah absolutely yeah no i remember that um yeah I, it is mind-blowing because i think um and a lot of it is because of the programming that we go through here in third dimensional earth um we're yeah. under um uh you know, the earth is being i think controlled right now by dark factions that you know just want to keep earth people enslaved. And that's part of the reason why we star seeds are here or, you know, us, us uh, um, sorry, I'm just, something popped up and I'm just trying to get rid of it. Uh, 
So that's a reason why I think we star seeds are here is because we're here to help expand consciousness. We're here to help heal people. We're here to help earth to ascend from the third dimension to the fifth dimension. Yeah. And actually the earth doesn't really need help. It's the earth people that need to yeah. uh, raise their consciousness so that they could follow. Cause right now earth is currently ascending. Okay. Uh, yeah, um, even though even though it doesn't feel like it sometimes, right? There seems to be a real spiritual battle going on out there. Oh yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, but um, but a lot of that is because a lot of us are still stuck in the matrix, you know. So you know, so once we bust out of the matrix, uh, you know, the, the matrix construct of you know that these you know dark beings are keeping us enslaved in. Um, you know, I found with myself, a lot of that stuff doesn't affect me, you know, anymore, you know, it's kind of like, you know, I'm living my life in, you know, fourth or fifth, you know, I'm trying, you know, at least that's what I'm, you know, you know, working towards. And everybody so when you went, sorry to interrupt you, Debbie, when yeah. you say fourth and fifth, I know that's supposed to be a higher, the higher realms. But right. when you talk, when you're talking about you're living your life in the fourth and fifth, how can people copy that? How can people who might be feeling really afraid because of what's happening around the earth right now, how can they say, okay, yeah, we, we should try and do that too. In your, I mean, this is probably advice to light workers and star seeds, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. It's advice I give all the time, actually. Uh, um, you need to raise your vibration and there's various ways you can do that. Um, meditation, you know, really excellent self-care, um, managing your stress, uh, you know, managing yeah. your diet. Um, I, I know it sounds like just basic advice, but um, meditation is is key. Um, you really want to get in tune with your your higher self and your higher guidance. Um, and I think just doing good for others. You know, just you know, if you're you know whether you're doing that, uh, you know, you know, just really embracing the love consciousness in your everyday life. Um, you're going to find that you're going to be manifesting things a lot faster that thing you're going to be in that, in that universal flow where things are going to seem a lot easier. Yeah. And you may even notice in your environment, things are starting to look brighter. They starting to look, you know, a little bit more um, detailed. I don't know. It's just um, a lot of times you can tell when you're in the higher dimensions is because uh, uh, through color, like the colors seem more brilliant or brighter or the details seem sharper. And then um, yeah, you, you just seem sharper. Your brain seems so sharp. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And, and you're like in the flow and it seems like your IQ even goes up maybe, a, you know, a notch or two. Yeah. <laughs> a notch or two. Yeah. It's like you're, you're in the flow. And uh, um, with me, I guess that the way I did it is, I decided I couldn't work in my 3d job anymore, that it was a toxic and work environment. And, and I was no yeah. longer in alignment with that kind of work. So I retired and devoted myself to doing, you know, the spiritual work full time. And my life has been amazing ever since. So, yeah. Um, yeah. I've yeah. seen your, I'm seeing you. If anybody's got Gaia TV, G G A I A, then Debbie has been on there. And since she's been on there, her, her readings have, like just gone crazy right so. oh yeah no yeah i can't yeah it's just like i can't uh i can't fit enough people in my calendar it's just crazy yeah yeah but it's brilliant i love it that people want to know so much about themselves and they want to oh, know no, about, it's exciting yeah no, yeah I, who's who they are where they're coming from because i was people all around the world too it's like yeah yeah amazing where you get people from calls from everywhere yeah oh yeah i get people from all parts of the world uh, um you know, Barcelona, Hong Kong, Australia, um, New Zealand, uh, Canada, you know, uh, England, Europe, England. <laughs> yeah, definitely UK. Yeah, def I get a lot of folks from the UK. UK, you guys are awakened in the UK. Um, it's we're, awesome. we're trying to be with this government stuff going on. We're trying to yeah, be awakened. I know. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's so like that takes too. Yeah, it just pulls you down a bit, but you've got to keep the vibration high, like you're saying, right? Yeah. So um, Dorothy's saying that's incredible, Debbie. So that's lovely. If anybody's got any questions for um, for Debbie, please just put them on the on the um, stream here, and I'll I'll ask her um, straight away. Uh, also, I've got some questions for you here, Debbie. I wanted to ask you um, how many star races are are out there in the universe? There must be so many. 
I'm there's not hundreds of thousands. There, there, there's hundreds of thousands of them. Um, yeah, the ones, and not all of them are good, right? So. No, no, not all of them are good. Yeah, um, that's I think the thing that I think uh, I think people, you know, because of Hollywood and the movies, you know, they tend to think that extraterrestrials are all bad or extraterrestrials are all good, and it's kind of they're like kind of like humans, you know, like Earth humans. They there's some that are good and there's some that aren't so good, you know? So, um, yeah. so you yeah. want to use discernment when, you know, you're interacting with extraterrestrial beings, either through channeling or through, um, your practice or, you know, things like that. So, um, but yeah, there's hundreds of thousands of different races and the ones that are most involved with earth is usually the, you know, so usually when I do a reading, I'm doing like, I'm pulling from maybe 10 or 12 races because those are the ones that are most involved with earth that are most interested in earth. Um, yeah. But there's, there's hundreds and thousands of, of races. So are they helping earth at this time? Um, yeah. The benevolent races are trying to help earth at this time. Um, uh, they're helping behind the scenes. Uh, I believe uh, that. In various I believe that. Ways. Yeah. In various different ways. Yeah. Because I deal with um, what I'm dealing, I deal with the the angelic realms. But I also I also ask um, um, Commander Ashtar, the Sharon mm -hmm. Ashtar, and the Ashtar Command. I always feel like they're they are around me quite mm -hmm. a lot. Mm -hmm. um, but those are the ones that I deal with because that's very similar to the Christ consciousness. You know that I feel quite comfortable with that one. Yeah, absolutely. And being from Sirius, you would definitely um, be embracing the Christ consciousness because. Uh, um, Sananda Jesus actually originated from Sirius. So, um, oh really? Oh, that's yeah. interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. He was from he was from Sirius. Uh, he was a ninth dimensional Syrian being at one time, and um, probably probably he's even beyond that now. But um, yeah. But he he decided to incarnate on Earth to help teach the Earth people to help kind of expand the consciousness because things were kind of going backwards on earth you know during oh those they were really going backwards yeah yeah that's i didn't know that i'm gonna to have to look into that a bit more so oh, yeah that's... you should yeah it's really it's really fascinating um i was so excited i was just like wow uh, you know jesus is an extraterrestrial that's exciting you know yeah yeah that's really exciting yeah um okay great thank you and do you think the star seeds and the light workers is there anything they can do to kind of wake up more to themselves quicker or is that just happening at its own natural pace right now um, I think you can, you can definitely work on it. Um, but, um, yeah, I would say, uh, you know, do the research, you know, on, you know, maybe, you know, if, if you're drawn to the whole star seed concept, you know, do some research, you know, my website has a huge galactic history section that people can access and, you know, you, or and I also have a YouTube channel, so you can go on my channel, get some information there. Uh, um, there's a mon wonderful books out there, um, you know, that. What you know, is your uh, website, Debbie? So I think my partner put it on the feed, but just, just to let people know. Yeah, yeah it's debbiesolaris.com. So it's D-E-B-B-I-E-S-O-L-A-R-I-S.com. And uh, there's a wealth of information. We have some uh, radio podcasts on there as well. And the media page, you can access my Gaia show for free on the Gaia page. Um, so if, even if you're not a member of Gaia, you can still watch the show um, from good. the link that I have on my page. And uh, I'll be on another show soon, which we can talk about later. But um uh, but yeah, there's, um, and then there's a big galactic history section and I do have a YouTube channel so you can watch some of those videos. And I just recently did a webinar on last Friday, which, uh, we're going to make available, um, on, on Kajabi, um, at some point. So is that going to be on your website as well? But yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah. They'll have access of, um, it'll be on Kajabi, but they'll have access access to it through my website absolutely so what is that going to be what is that about that webinar um i just taught it last friday so we did a live stream and then we recorded it um it's called recognizing extraterrestrial frequencies so the, the premise of the course is mainly just um to learn how to discern frequencies you know being able to read other people's auras 
knowing mm. where maybe what star systems they came from by looking at their auras. Wow. When you're doing, when you're doing work, you know, if you're like, if you're a Reiki master, you're doing. You know, oh, I would love to do that. Oh yeah. That's an awesome. That. Yeah. It's an awesome course. Yeah. It's a two hour long course. So you're going to get, you're going to get your money's worth, but. Um, Is it on there now or it's going to be on there soon? It'll be on there soon. We're working on it as we speak. Definitely um, let me know. Cause I'd love to, I'd love to do that. I yeah, it's, it's, it's an, it was an awesome course. We got a lot of great feedback. People loved it. I think there was about, there was about 320 people that um, registered for the course. So, which is amazing for a first um, webinar, but. Um, yeah, that's great. Yeah. So it's, and it, there's even a little tutorial. So we do some exercises throughout the course where I teach you how to open up your third eye, how to, you know, tune into those frequencies, how to read auras, how to mm -hmm. access the Akashic records without a formal process. Um, Do you, can you teach how to close them as well? Because I'm getting that thing across my head now. Like I was saying to you before we started that this sort your of third attack. eye is activating. That's why you're getting that feeling. Yeah, but it, it didn't feel good when I started. And it's like, it's, it, I feel like I'm actually being attacked by something. That's what I told you. I was seeing something in yeah. that vision. Yeah. So, uh, does it teach that as well? How to defend? Yeah, defend? yeah. We, we teach a little bit about shielding and um, yeah. how to discern uh, negative entities in that course as well. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, thank you. I will definitely, definitely going to do that. So Dorothy's saying, what does Gaia mean? Dor um, Dorothy, Gaia is actually a, like a TV, an alternative TV channel, isn't it really? Um, yeah. Yeah, it's How, considered to be... Um, consciousness media so it's like the spiritual netflix <laughs> so so it's, it's, you can download the app from you know i guess your apple or android um you know uh, i guess uh, applications and uh and you have to it, it's a subscriber it's, 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 it's so it's like a subscriber thing like netflix like you have to pay a certain amount a month but they have amazing shows on on gaia i mean even beyond, you know, the show I was on, even though that that was a good show, but um, they have some very amazing shows. It's worth the twelve bucks a month, I think. But um, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, so, what is the new one that you're doing then? Is that something this, you said? There's a new guy show coming that you're going to be on. Yeah. Um, so the show I was on before is called Beyond Belief with George Norrie, um, and that's the one that's currently on my website because it's been aired. Uh, um, the show that I'm going to be on is called Open Minds with Regina Meredith. And uh, she's an amazing interviewer. She is probably the best of the best um, out there in, you know, um, in media right now. Um, and I was very honored to be on her show. Um, uh, so I'm going to, I did a taping back in January. It's going to be aired probably May or June of this year. Um, so if you follow open minds, you'll, you'll, you'll get notification of that. Um, and I'm also going to be doing another show with her this summer. So, um, we're going to, it's going to yeah. be like part two. Yeah. Yeah. So. You're going to be popular on that. Is that, yeah. Discussing the same kind of stuff and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Mostly what we talked about. Yeah. Mostly what I talked about with George was my extraterrestrial contact experience. Um, what I, what I talked about with Regina was on galactic history. Um, Mm. And she asked some really great questions. It was a really great conversation. I really felt like uh, it was a good flow. Um, yes. So yeah, I'm excited for people to see that. And we're, we're going to be doing another one this summer. So, um, so you'll probably see me on Gaia periodically and, you know, different shows. Yeah, that's great that you're being picked up on that now and that, you know, you're becoming a sort of a household name on that. That's really, really good. Yeah, no, it's, it's you know, it's uh, it's like a dream come true. I, I, I never imagined, you know, when I started this journey, because I started doing Akashic readings back in 2014, uh, I never imagined it would take me to Gaia, you know, I, I mean, and I was a Gaia subscriber for a few years, you know, so I, you know, I never even thought that, oh, you know, one day I might be on Gaia, you know, but that's where this consciousness is taking us and where, um, so when you're operating in those higher dimensions, you're able to manifest things, you know, uh, you're able to take your, you know, your practice from this level to this level, you know, so. Yeah. Yeah. And some of the work, some of the stuff we're doing on this page, meditation, prayer, a lot of that stuff actually is all about, that's why it's called elevate your inner self, helping yeah. to get people to simple tools to where they need to go with their soul. But, you know, Tell us a little bit about why your readings, why anybody should have an intergalactic 
reading and put put aside their you know their own belief systems their own limitations how will that help them because i know from personal experience guys i'm just saying what happened when i did a reading with debbie i had a couple of people in the family that were very viciously psychically attacking me for a period of about 20 years in this life and that was traced back to a lifetime in egypt at the in the temple of mm -hmm. isis i believe right they were mm -hmm. my sisters then and they were trying to attack me then did something where i was buried alive um they went to a man to a like a magician it all sounds like it's really far-fetched but it actually happened and then and that's the same the same person is the same dynamic is in this lifetime but they're not mm -hmm. trying to kill me off obviously and then in the past past life like it went way back beyond that didn't it it went like centuries oh yeah we went way back to sirius and i don't know were you from vega too i can't remember no i was I from i think mostly sirius a little bit of orion and then there was um the Anunnaki. There was a whole oh, Anunnaki. the Anunnaki. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, no, I remember that? that. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Sorry, I do a lot of readings. I can't keep up on everybody's. Uh, no, stuff. no, it's fine. But it, yeah, all but, I'm saying, guys, is it helps to put modern things that are happening in your life now. If it's something persistent that doesn't go away, you can trace it way back, and it can be removed. You know. Yeah. No. I. Um, I always use my friend as an example. I had a, a, a really good friend who was an amazing Reiki master um, and healer that uh, had this irrational fear of the dark. And, um, and then, you know, we traced it back to, I think, her life in Egypt where she was buried alive or something. It was really bizarre. But um, it was... Uh, um, but it takes, like, concepts that you, you know it kind of puts things into perspective, like, oh, that's why I am this way, or that's why I have these fears, or this is why I have struggles with some of my relationships, because this is, these are things I was struggling with in some of my past lives, whether they be on earth or um, off planet. Uh, and sometimes you might've gone through some really traumatic events off planet, you know, maybe you were in you know, in Lyra during the Lyran Wars, or maybe you were in Orion when they had the Orion conflicts. And, uh, and that can have an impact to, you know, maybe why you're struggling today. Um, and we do carry trauma signatures in our DNA. So even yeah. if, um, you know, we're having an earth experience right now, because our soul also has like DNA, we carry trauma signatures even from other star systems sometimes. Uh, wow. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Do, your readings can help to clear that out. Because I remember you gave oh, me yeah. like a, a prayer. There was like an invocation prayer that we did yeah. together. And that really yeah. helped actually. That oh yeah, really absolutely. Helped. Yeah. Um, I do two different types. I actually do several different types of readings, but if you want your Kashic records cleared, I would, um, and you wanted to set, you know, uh, release all those old blockages or all those old programs, I would suggest an Akashic clearing. If you want to know about your past lives, you want to know what your life purpose is, you know, why you are the way you are, what your galactic gifts are, then I would recommend an Akashic reading. And then I also do like an intuitive reading, just if you have like some straightforward questions where it doesn't require us to access the records as much. Um, I do a starseed origins reading for people that just want to know where they're from. You know, maybe they don't want, really want to know you know, the blow by blow details of every single incarnation they've had, but they just want to know where they're from. You know, they just want that quick information. So, so there's, you know, some choices that you can pick from. Um, and I think all of them have value. I think uh, I even offer tarot readings because I do have a few clients that love those. I'm, I'm, that's probably my least, um, requested reading because there's a lot of tarot readers out there but i also do tarot readings if you prefer something more traditional yeah so this is so funny because it's almost like you know when we were growing up we'd go to a bar and you'd get some guy coming to you and saying where are you from and you just go oh london but actually it gives it a whole new meaning you're not from london at all are you you know imagine saying you're from sirius or the pleiades or venus or <laughs> it'll yeah, be no exactly yeah it'll be a whole new conversation level that we, we would be going on right if that was the case um, yeah it's like back in the 70s when people used to ask what's your sign baby and uh <laughs> and you know it's kind of like oh yeah you know i'm aquarius or i'm you know i'm i'm, I'm leo or whatever um uh, Gemini. Um, 
you know, now it's kind of like, you know, what star system are you from? You know, so that's the new, <laughs> the new tag phrase or the new pickup phase. I don't know. So yeah. um, I think we can have a lot of fun with this too. Okay. So uh, Karen's got a question. She's saying, I regularly go to gong baths, but very rarely have any visions. But during one gong bath, I saw a brown bear very clearly. Does Debbie think this may have anything to do with the Arcturians? Brown bear? I'm not sure about that. Hmm. Arcturus is called the bear guardian. Okay, so Arcturus actually means the bear guardian. Um, oh, does it? Yeah. Yes. I, so, I, yeah, interesting. So I think there, my there's... partner is an Arcturian. I have to send him to you, Debbie, to have a look. Yeah, no, yeah, we'll have to do a reading um, sometime. Uh, yeah. yeah, it could have a connection with Arcturus because uh, Arcturus is in the star system of Bodes, which is the, um, I think the guardsman or the guardian. Um, and uh, the, the, the star Arcturus itself means bear guardian. So okay. there, there is a be. bear bear connection with, uh, with, with Arcturus. So it's probably something that's symbolizing maybe your connection with Arcturus. Yeah, that's interesting. There is another client of mine who's always seeing a bear as well when she's meditating, a very mm. big bear. So I need mm -hmm. to talk to her about this as well. Oh, um, yeah, no, it's pretty cool, yeah. So how does – so one question I would have for you as well, just just how do – how can we all as light beings help the planet at the moment? What and Not all of us are light beings, obviously, but a lot of us are, and we're awake to that. Mm -hmm. How can we do that? You said through prayer and meditate. You said through meditation, I think you were saying? Yeah, prayer and meditation, and also I think just – being of service, you know, um, in whatever yeah. capacity you can be, uh, you know, even just if it's something little like, you know, paying for, you know, the coffee drink of the person behind you, you know, like little acts, what they call random acts of kindness, um, or helping yeah. out your neighbor. Um, it doesn't have to be anything grandiose. Uh, and I think sometimes we get stuck in this thinking of, oh, I got to do something that's really, you know, you know, phenomenal, you know, it's, um, I think, uh, you know, my understanding with, you know, star seeds and light workers is that because we're coming in with, with a higher vibration, you know, than the majority of the population, we have an exponential effect. So our, our vibration um, will raise the vibration of a 50 mile radius around us. And so when we're doing, you know, when we're being of service, when we're helping others, you know, when we're you know, just trying to be good humans, uh, we continue to raise that vibration and it doesn't only affect us and our immediate families, it also affects everybody around us uh, to some capacity. So uh, yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, I would yeah. say, you know, at whatever capacity you can, um, myself, you know, I, before I became an Akashic reader, um, and, you know, this was kind of like a part-time thing I did, but I used to do volunteer service as an animal assisted therapy team. So um, I, I had a, I, I had a therapy animal that I would take to um, hospitals, libraries, schools, um, nursing homes, and we would do this, you know, all volunteer. So we never got paid, but it was the most rewarding work I've ever done. And I felt like, you know, just me and my cat, I had a therapy cat. You can read her story on my website too. Um, we, we, we did so much good for the community, you know, the communities of Colorado Springs and Denver. Yeah, yeah that's amazing. You see, I uh, half expected you to say you had a bear, but you didn't. <laughs> so that was good. No, um, no, no bears, just a, no just bears. a hairless cat. I had a, I had a Sphinx cat. Um, and yeah. do you think, do you think, Debbie, that the light will win? Because we are, we are really in a struggle at the moment. There's so many people really know that there's stuff going on beyond the news, what you're seeing, what we're being told. Um, you know, if we call our galactic light beings, like I've been calling on the Syrians, I have been, mm -hmm. along with my angelic yeah. realms and stuff, they hear us, right? They hear oh, us. Oh, yeah, no, they definitely are tuned into us. Um, and it seems kind of like, how can they be tuned into, you know, uh, but we're, we're all one, we're all conscious, we're all part of the same consciousness. So yeah, they're definitely in tune with us. And uh, yeah. you have to remember that these, these beings have greater abilities, you know, than we have. So it's easier for them maybe to connect with us than for us to maybe to connect with them. But um, yeah, uh, but yeah. yeah, to answer your question, yes, I do believe that the, the light will prevail. Um, 
the Arcturians, when I was on board the ship, they reassured me that things were under control, that, um, that not to, they told me, they kept telling me over and over, don't worry, things are going to be working out well, you know, that, you know, things are under control, you're protected, everybody that's connected with you is protected. And they meant, you know, the entire, you know, light worker, you know, uh, yeah. family, not just my family. So they were referring to everybody. Um, and so that gave me a lot of reassurance, because before I was on board the ship, I was always a very fearful person. I was always like, oh, you know, all this bad stuff's happening, you know, what's happening. Um, now I don't worry about it anymore. I, I know that as long as I keep on my path, you know, I keep doing what I'm doing to help the planet. And, you know, I'm, you know, being a good human, helping others, um, and encouraging others to be, you know, doing the same thing then we're going to change this planet. I mean, and we need to stay focused on the good. I think it's easy to get distracted with all the craziness that's happening in our political stage and, you know, the economics and, you know, all the other crazy, you know, COVID and everything else that's insane right now. Um, yeah. Uh, you want to keep thinking about what you want this earth to be, what, what, you, what you know this earth can become rather than focusing on all the, the circus, you know, the political circus that's out yeah, there. Yeah, which is what they want you to focus on. Uh, exactly, yeah. yeah. They want to keep us in fear. They want us to keep us uh, feeling despaired and hopeless. And, yeah, they love that stuff. They love it when we're in fear. Uh, I just refuse to be in fear anymore. I, I don't, you know, I don't worry about it. Um, you know, like everybody's talking about the, you know, COVID vaccine passports. I'm like, you know, I'm still not getting a vaccine. You know, yeah, not, yeah, yeah, precisely. Yeah, precisely. I was talking to somebody about that today, but yeah, I totally agree. Thank yeah. you. And um, um, Dorothy's asking again, so by raising my vibration, can I support other people and Earth as well, or do I need training? Um, you don't need training at all, Dorothy. Um, I think just do um, do the things I mentioned. I mean, you can even, uh, you know, look into high vibrational diet, you know, look into... Um, meditation, having a yoga practice, you know, whatever, whatever makes feels good to you, you know, um, hiking, you know, being out in nature. So you don't need any special training. And yes, you're definitely going to have a positive effect on the planet and on on people of the people of planet Earth. Yeah, this is what I, I, I sort of, I really try to get across everything on this page. But sometimes it's a bit hard, Debbie, because you want to talk about all this stuff, like jump for joy and talk about it. But on the other hand, you know that some people may not understand it or they think you're slightly crazy, So, which I am oh, sometimes. Yeah, I don't, I don't care if people think I'm crazy. I'm like, you know. No, I don't care anymore. I'm just like, yeah, this is I, I me. I don't care either. Yeah. And the, the truth is, if we really knew who we were, the multidimensional beings that we what we are, and mm -hmm. the, the God that created us and, you know, the source that created us and how we, where we come from, we wouldn't fear any of this, would we, really? No, I mean, I think, I, I, and I think part of this journey towards raising our vibrations is to stay more connected with source, you know, to get that deeper connection with source. And once, once you get that yeah. deeper connection with source, all the other stuff is just noise. It just doesn't really mean anything as much anymore. You know, it, it yeah. you know, it's, it's just trying to, you know, stay in that Christ consciousness or that love consciousness that, you know, we came here to master. I am going to find out more about Jesus and Sirius now. I'm, I'm going yeah, to yeah, now. definitely. Yeah, you should. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely. So thank you so much, Debbie. Um, let us, I think we, we can wrap it up, but if you want to tell us, where, tell people where they can find you and just to let everybody know, Debbie is booked up until July because she's amazing, but she will be opening the website again to people very soon, won't you? Um, yes, the booking, the booking um, calendar will be open probably in June, I'm thinking. Um, but you can sign up to be notified on the booking page. So yeah. um, you just leave your email address or something. Yeah, yeah. They just, yeah, they just leave your name and email and we'll contact you. Um, uh, yeah, so my website, again, is Debbie Solaris, so D-E-B-B-I-E-S-O-L-A-R-I-S dot com. Yeah, we'll put it uh, up here too. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, and the, the, as far as the webinar I mentioned, you know, we'll, we, we will have a link for that on the website. So I'll make sure to, you know, it, it, the webinar has passed, but um, we're going to be offering that as 
um, you know, you know, view on command access um, on Kajabi. So uh, yeah. you'll, you'll have access to that. You can also find me on uh, YouTube. I do have a YouTube channel. Just uh, just write, type in Debbie Solaris. You'll find me. I'm the only one. So um, so you'll see my channel. And I think we, we just had a new, no, I think we're going to have a new video coming out in um, on Wednesday. So um so we try to put out a video like every other week. So, um, so are these just your chats from whatever, whatever top topic you want to talk about? Um, most of them are actual Akashic readings that I've done for other clients. Oh yeah. I've seen some of those. They're really good. Yeah, that, yeah. That, that we've actually converted to video. And, uh, so if you want to know, you know, what a reading with me is like, you know, you could go on the YouTube channel, I do hope to do chats and more like instructional videos, um, like little short ones, probably shortly. Um, but for now, that's what I have featured is mostly the. We've got so know. much going on now, Debbie. I don't know how you're doing it, but it's. I'm so pleased that you've got all this, all these, all this interest from people. Because let's be honest, if people weren't wakening up, they wouldn't be calling you for a reading. Let's. Oh you no, know. no, that's what. That's why I'm so excited. Is because this is a sign that people are really waking up and they're, you know, starting to expand their consciousness. So, yeah. So I, I kind of feel like, you know, a lot of the stuff that we're doing is working, you know, it's starting to work, you know? So, um, yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Well, anyway, thank, you. thank you for having me on. It was been oh, you've been amazing. Thank you. And uh, I think Dorothy's just saying, thank you very much to both of you. Very informative and loved your interviewing. Thank you, Dorothy. And um, Nick, my partner has posted your website if anybody has any questions that they have for you, I will obviously pass them on to you. And yeah, I think, thank you so much for your time, Debbie. Oh, thank you amazing. for having me. Namaste. And, Namaste. Um, God bless. bless. Many blessings. Um, many blessings to everybody that's um, joined us today. Thank you. And I'll be in contact with you as well. All right. You take care.